ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओके ऑल टुगेदर प्लीज ओम ज्ञान चिमरंदस्य गणनंदना शलाकाय चक्षुरोन मिलितम् येन तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोविस्तम साबितम् येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदामयम ददाति स्वापदंतिकम वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्री युक्ता पदकमलम श्री गुरुन वैष्णवम श्या श्री रूपम सागरजातम सहगन रगनतम वितम तम सजीवम सार्वेतम सार्वदूतम प्रजना सहितं कृष्ण चैतन्य देवम श्री राधा कृष्णा पदं सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखां वितम श्या हे कृष्ण करना सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेशा गोविका कंधा राधे कंधु नमोस्तुते तप्चु कंचन गोरंगे राधे ब्रिंदावनिश्वरी ब्रिशबान सूट देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिये पंचकाव्य रूपियस्चा कृपा सिंधु बेवचा परिधानम् पावने बियो वैष्णवे बियो नमो नमः Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Arvedi Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare So reading from Shri Mad Gitu Panishad as it is Translation and Commentary Srila Prabhupada Today's verse uh, 62 Correct? Correct. Chapter 18 entitled The Perfection of Renunciation. So, 62. Please repeat. Tam, Tam eva, eva, Sharanam, Gacha, Sarvabhavena, Bharata, Tat Prasadad, Param. Shantim Sdhanam Prapyasi Shasvatam Tam Eva Sharanam Gacha Sarvabhavena Bharata Tat Prasadat Param Shantim Sdhanam Prapashyasi Shasvatam Tam eva sharanam gacca Sarva bhavena bharata Tat prasadad param santim Shtanam prapashyasi shasvatam Tam eva sharanam gacca Sarva Bhavena Bharata Tat Prasadat Param Shantim Sdhanam Prapyasi Shashvatam Okay, go ahead. Tam evam saranam gacham Tam evam saranam gacham Sarva Bhavena Bharata Sarva Bhavena Bharata Prasadat Param Shantim Tat Prasadat Param Shantim Tanam Prabhasasi Sarvatam Tanam Prabhasasi Sarvatam Tam evam saranam gacham Tam evam saranam gacham Sarva Bhavena Bharata Sarva Bhavena Bharata Tam eva sharanam gacha Tam eva sharanam gacha Sarva bhavena bharata Sarva bhavena bharata Prasadat param shanti Prasadat param shanti Tanam prakshasi sasvatam Tanam prakshasi sasvatam Tam eva sharanam gacha Sava bhavena bharata Tat prasada prayam shantim Anam prapyasi tasvatam Tam eva 
तमेवं शरणम गच्च साव भावेन भारत आनम प्रप्यसी शाश्वतम प्रसाद परम शांति स्थान प्राप्यसी शाश्वत प्लीज रिपीट तम अंत हिम एव सर्टनली शरण गच्च शरंदर सार्वभाव इन ऑल रिस्पेक्ट भारत ओ सन ऑफ भरत थत् प्रसाद by his grace param transcendental shantim peace stanam the abode propyasi you will get shashvatam eternal translation shil prabhat o skin of bharata surrender unto him utterly by his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode please repeat o skian of bharata surrender unto him utterly by his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode so purport shri prabhat a living entity should therefore surrender unto the supreme personality of godhead who is situated in everyone's heart and that will relieve him from all kinds of miseries of this material existence by such surrender not only will one be released from all miseries in this life but at the end he will reach the supreme god the transcendental world is described in the vedic literature rig veda 12220 as tad vishnu paramam padam since all the creation sorry since all of creation is the kingdom of god everything material is actually spiritual but parama padam specifically refers to the eternal abode which is called the spiritual sky or vaikuntha in the 15th chapter of bhagavad gita it is stated sarvashya cha ham ridhi sanibhisto the lord is situated in everyone's heart so the recomm- so this recommendation that one should surrender unto the super soul sitting within means that one should surrender unto the supreme personality of godhead krishna krishna has already been accepted by arjuna as the supreme he was accepted in the 10th chapter as param brahma param dharma arjuna has accepted krishna as the supreme personality of godhead and the supreme abode of all living entities not only because of his personal experience but also because of the evidence of the great authorities like narada asita devala and vyasa mukam karochi va chalam pangam laite garim yat kripa tamaham vande shri guru nitarinam tad eva sharanam gachcham sava bhavena bharata tat prasadat param shantim stanam prapyasi shasvatam O skin of Bharata surrender unto him utterly by his grace you will attain transcendental peace and the supreme and eternal abode so this is krishna but interesting but he's referring to himself in the third person surrender unto him <laughs> previously he said uh, right ishvara sava bhutanam hridaya arjuna tisthati the supreme lord is situated in everyone's heart o arjuna so we surrender to krishna in the heart uh sometimes the f- cricket players or the football players they make a good play and they they look up in the sky and say thank you god i scored a goal <laughs> but actually <laughs> they should or oh, they, they should look within the heart because all their talent and ability is the grace of krishna so but uh, that's okay krishna is in the sky also <laughs> but um 
For yogi, he meditates on Krishna within the heart. He tries to see Krishna, he tries to perceive Krishna within the heart. Nam, gu, uh, Rupa, Guna, Leela, the name of Krishna we chant. Then we uh, try to see the Rupa of Krishna. When you say somebody's name, you will naturally think of their form. So you chant the name, then the Rup will come. And then when you think of the Rupa, then the next thing you think of the qualities of Krishna. So Rupa Goswami, a nectar of devotion, he's given 64 qualities uh, of Krishna. We can study them, we can meditate on them. And then Leela. So Leela, uh, two department, entrance to the Leela means the Sangha of Krishna. Because Krishna le means Krishna's activities. So activities are there with his devotees. Srimati Radharani, Madhurya Ras, Yashoda, Nanda, Vatsalya Bhav, so on, the cowherd boys, the servants, Rattag, so on. So, within the heart, we try to see Krishna. Uh, we try to perceive his presence. That is the first stage of chanting. Uh, when you chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, and you're chanting uh, in a uh, devotional way as an offering to Krishna, then you should try to perceive that special taste of Vaikuntha. Huh? As Prabhupada, uh, Krishna mentions here also, that you get the peace. So of course, then Krishna says, after you, uh, by surrendering to Krishna, uh, you'll get transcendental peace. But that is not the end point. Because though you, through peace, you'll become a muksha. You, you become liberated from material suffering through the detachment. But uh, like the Buddhists, they also talk about, we have to give up uh, enjoyment in this material world and because it is a source of suffering. So that suffering is base of suffering is anxiety, right? Tension. The off opposite um, is peacefulness, shanti, self-fulfillment, atmaram. But even if you attain peacefulness, still you're in the cycle of birth and death. So we want to actually go into Krishna Leela. We, and that means go to the Supreme Lord's abode. If you remember last week, uh, in 55, Krishna said, Vishyate, vishyate tad anantaram, uh, that if you perform bhakti, you can enter into the kingdom of God. As Prabhupada used to say, go back to Godhead, you can attain Krishna Loka. So yes, you'll attain peace in this life, you'll become the desires of this world, karma, asha, kroda, asha, the desire to enjoy in this world will be complicated. Uh, but the real thing is beyond that basis, you should enter Krishna Leela, you should enter Vaikuntha. So Krishna says, yes, in this section here, after that 55th verse, he explains all that. Huh? If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all obstacles of conditioned life in this material world by my grace. Hmm? If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. Lost means you'll be still in this cycle of birth and death. So we want to become attached to Krishna and then re-establish our swarup, our relationship with Krishna. We don't want to just become liberated from the tension of this world. We want to become ecstatically involved because that's what that um, 55th verse, right? Vishise tadanantaram, you will enter into me, he can enter into the kingdom of God. So we enter into Krishna, we enter into the by consciousness. But we maintain our individuality. Huh? We, Krishna conscious, we become Krishna, Krishna is conscious being, we are conscious beings. But he is the supremely conscious being, uh, Chaitanas Chaitananam, uh, he is Nitya Nityanam, the supreme being, we are also super, uh, eternal beings. 
but his consciousness is all pervading. So entering into Krishna Leela and the kingdom of God means to enter, to merge into Krishna, to mix your consciousness with Krishna, but not to lose your individuality. That is the mistake of the Mayavadis. They think that liberation means I'll enter into the ocean and I'll become one with the ocean. But the example is given that, yeah, no, in the ocean, uh, there are fish swimming here and there. There are different living entities. And even if you say, oh, I'm a drop of water and I'm entering into the ocean, so I'll merge with the ocean. No, the molecules, the individual molecules in that drop of ocean, water, they'll still be individual molecules in the ocean. And uh, Prabhupada quotes uh, Rupa Goswami, he says, just like a green bird enters into a green tree, you can say, oh, I can't see the bird, it's merged into the tree. But the individuality of the bird is still there. So this is an important point, because uh, the Mayavad philosophy, it's a kind of personal extinction. I'm not going to exist. Uh, and then Buddhism comes along. So Buddhism is bo voidism, I'll become nothing, then I'll become free, I'll become... And there, of the Mayavadi comes along and says, no, you merge into God. But they're all talking about losing the individuality. But Krishna already said, made it clear, um, uh, mamai vangsa jiva loke jiva bhuta sanatana. So Krishna is teaching sanatan dham here. Sanatan dham means you maintain your personality, but instead of reciprocating with the material energy, you reciprocate with Krishna. Huh? That's the choice. We, you can reciprocate in the material world with birth, death, old age and disease as your attendants going through birth, or you can have eternal life. So surrender. I remember when I was a new devotee, I was reading this. And I, what does that mean, surrender, surrender? So if the devotee, he performs sadhana and he wakes up himself up spiritually, then Krishna, within the heart, Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Puravakam Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamam Upiyantite He gives the intelligence by which we can understand our relationship with Krishna. So this is the important point that we've already explained that earlier Krishna gave Varnashram Dham and Varnashram is in the sphere of Vaidhi Bhakti. It, it helps to regulate people within society. Okay, you have Brahminical tendency, do this activity. You have Chetriya tendency, do this activity. You have Vaishya activity, do this. Uh, you have Sutra tendency, do this. But perform those duties as an offering to me. So somebody may say, well, you say perform the duties as a Krishna says, as an offering to but what does that mean? I don't, I don't know who is Krishna, I don't know what is, you know, I don't have that feeling. So within Varnashram, uh, Sanatan Dharma or Jaiva Dharma or Bhakti Sadhana <coughs> should be performed. And then that devotional mood, which is within the heart, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem, Sadha it's eternally established, but it's sleeping. But it's how, what happens? Shravanadi, that means Shravan means Shravanam Kedan of Adi means and the rest, the Nava Vida Bhakti, you're all devotees. Then Karides, what happens? Sudachite, then the consciousness becomes purified and then Karide Udai. Then the Prem Bhav, the devotional move, wakes up. And then you can directly uh, understand surrender to Krishna. So surrender doesn't mean. Um, that you become just a puppet, but you maintain, you know, like Krishna told me to do this, Krishna told me to do that, Krishna told me to do this. No, you reciprocate with Krishna, just like we enjoy friendship, right? We go, we go to the uh, restaurant or we go prashad and we want to have talk, we reciprocate. So the devotee is eternally reciprocating with Krishna. So similarly, we're either reciprocating with Krishna in that way, or we're reciprocating with the material energy. 
So even in the material energy, we have choice, right? But we're, because of, uh, as, uh, as Krishna explains earlier, if you become conscious of me, so in the material world, if however, if you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. So the, the uh, m person, materialist, is reciprocating with the material energy. <clears throat> he's trying to get pleasure out of material energy. And, but he's not. Um, there was once a philosophy floating around, not so much now, that, oh, people in the material world, they're just... Because uh, uh, Krishna says in the previous word, Ishwara Sava Bhutanam, that I am within the heart of everyone and I'm directing the wanderings of the living entity. So people then think, oh well then, if somebody's in the material world, Maya is just telling them what to do. So in the lower species of life, the living entity is very much controlled, but especially in the human form of life, because of intelligence, uh, some philosophical understanding, the teachings of the sages, we understand what is right and wrong. So we have choice. And therefore there is punishment and reward. In the material world, if you use your choice properly, uh, then you can go to Swagalok and have a good result. But if you use your choice badly, then you can go to Narak or you can go lower species of life. Uh, so we have choice in all situations, but we're reciprocating uh, with material energy or we're reciprocating with Krishna and Krishna's devotees in the spiritual world. So uh, this is our choice, just like I think, yes, it's the next verse. It's very interesting. Um, we 62. Yeah, here it is. Um, Thus I have explained to you knowledge still more confidential. That about the super soul, this is very confidential knowledge. Like I said, when I was a new devotee, I was always like, what does that mean, surrender to Krishna? This is very confidential knowledge, it's not. Uh, Deliberate on this fully, then do as you wish. Huh? Do as you wish. Huh? Later on, Krishna will say, yes, Karishya uh, say Tavavachanam. He said, now I'm ready. Because uh, Krishna uh, tells Arjuna, Arjuna, armed with knowledge, stand and fight. Very interesting. He's on the battlefield, he's a Chatriya. He has all those mystic weapons that he learned from his gurus, but armed with knowledge, Arjuna, fight. But what fight is he really talking about? Fight to become out of the material world and act according to my direction. I want Yudhisthira Maharaj on the throne. I don't want this Duryodhana. He's a troublemaker. And remember, you have a duty. But perform your duties that is Daivivan Ashram as an offering to me. And you'll get that mood of Yajna, Manmana, always become Krishna conscious, uh, Manmana in a devotional way, uh, Madhyaji, and do everything as an offering. We've discussed this the last couple of weeks, right? We have so many material duties, you can say, with re we have to bathe the body, we have to feed the body, we have to rest the body, but we can do it as a yajna. Huh? I'm taking a bath in the morning before Mangalati, this is a yajna. I'm walking to the temple, I'm doing it as a yajna. In this way, bhakti becomes kirtaniya sadahari. It, it's not just like in the man-made religions, Saturday we go to church and then that's there, or Sunday we go and that. You know, but we're going to Chobis Kanta 24 hours a day. Because everything, Ekeha Kurunandana, we're fixed in one direction. I want to develop my relationship with Krishna. So that is surrender. Huh? And it is according to the Acharyas. I was just listening this afternoon to a, a conversation of Srila Prabhupada. And uh, he was talking about how he met a Professor Kutoski 
in, um, in Russia. You know, he was there for a few days. And uh, he talked to one big communist uh, professor. And Prabhu was saying, uh, tell me, what's the difference between our philosophy and your philosophy, your Marxism, your communism? So, uh, he, Prabhupada described in the conversation, he said, you are surrendering to Lenin, Prabhupada said, Marx, Lenin, uh, and we are surrendering to Krishna. You are taking uh, the advice of Marx and Lenin and Stalin, God help us, <laughs> what a person. <laughs> you are taking that, that, you're taking those people as your uh, instructor, you're following there, but we're following Krishna. So Prabhupada explained, I told him, the principle is the same. We are in this world and we have to, the principle is we have to surrender in the sense take instruction, guidance from persons other than ourself. So, that principle is there. But who are you going to choose? And then I remember also another uh, conversation by Pro, uh, with Prabhupada. And uh, somebody said, well, yes, you have to surrender to you have to surrender to um, somebody, but how do you know that Krishna is God? So Prabhupada said, well, as it's, it's mentioned here in the verse, param dhama pavitram paramam mama. Uh, Arjuna says, uh, you are the supreme abode and witness. I think I marked that verse. Yeah, here it is, 12.13. Param Brahma, Param Dharma, Pavitram, Paramam Bhavam. Arjuna said, this is 10th chapter, as Prabhupada said in the book, You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest. All the great sages such as Narada, Asita, Devala, Vyas, confirm this truth about you and now you yourself are declaring it to me. So we are not just surrendering to Krishna uh, whimsically but we're seeing well uh, there's a series of great sages and sadhus who have proclaimed Krishna to be the supreme person. Uh, so we're, we're choosing Krishna and uh, when this person said in the conversation, yeah, but maybe Krishna is not God. And Prabhupada didn't talk at this point because this means we're accepting the Vedic authority, the rishis, the sadhus, and the history, the traditions of the Vedas. Prabhupada said, well, you find somebody better to surrender than Krishna and I'll surrender to him. But unless you can bring somebody forward, I'll stay with Krishna. <laughs> this is this is logic, right? Huh? Is there any book like Bhagavad Gita? Five thousand no. in five thousand years, is are people going to be reading Marxism <laughs> and Sta Lenin and Stalin and thinking, "Wow, I'm I'm learning so much from Das Kapital." This communism is so wonderful. <laughs> no, everyone, <laughs> Russia, they, they had a saying before it collapsed. They, they had a saying, we can't go on living like this. It was in Russian. We can't live like this. The, you know, they had no, Marxism meant no, uh, no private property. Once Marx or a Lenin was asked, what is communism? And he said, no private property. Everything belongs to the state, even the people. So we know in the conditioned world, Ahamma uh, Meti, right? Everyone thinks I'm the body and the things related to the body, my personal paraphernalia, my family, my land, my house, my motor car, my bicycle, they're mine. That's natural. So communism will always fail because the conditioned souls, they have to have some kind of possession. And that is misdirected in the material world, in the spiritual world, we think, my Krishna, my Radharani, 
my sadhu sangha, my gurudev, my friends, we possess. Uh, so you cannot take away this uh, a desire to possess that's there through affection. It's just impossible. It's part of the soul. Krishna says, Ridaya uh, mayam, right? The devotees are my heart. And they have nothing but me in their heart. I know nothing, no one but them, and they know no one but me. So this is the proper sense of possession. Krishna says, Mavai Vangsa Jiva Mama Angsa, my Angsa. So we, Krishna thinks that my devotees, not e even devotees, but these spirit souls, they're mine. Uh, I'm the origin. Ahamsar, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Ahamsar Vasya Prabhavo, they come from me. They're mine, they're my production. Just like if I make a painting, this is my painting. Right? And there's an expression, is there not? Possession turns sand to gold. Right? If it's your bicycle, you'll oil it and keep it, the brake pedal and pump the tires, you look after it. If you have a harmonium and it's your harmonium, you keep it tuned and you keep it polished and you make sure no bug, your possession turns sand to gold. But if it's not your harmony, not your bicycle, you use it and then use and throw, as they say. Right? You, so, Krishna, he thinks these are devotees of mine. So, throughout this section of Jaiva Dharma, Sanatana Dharma, he says, these are my devotees, and by my grace, I bring them to me. So, the devotees are the possession of Krishna, but not only that, Krishna says they're his heart. Huh? They're his heart. The sadhus are his heart. Uh, well, not just the sadhus, but everyone is dear to Krishna. But those that render, do, you know that verse, excuse me. Samaham sava bhuteshu na dveshi na priya. I'm equal to everyone. I don't dislike anyone whimsically, nor do I favor anyone whimsically. Right, there's one re so called religion, they say, we are chosen and everyone is just an animal to be exploited by us. No, Krishna, that, that is fault. If I have ten children and I think, this is my favorite, the other ones, they're insignificant, that's a fault. So they're ascribing, that's misinformation. They're ascribing that God is a whimsical person, that, oh, these people are chosen by me, the rest, they can be exploited. No. Krishna is equal to everyone, but those that render service to me, I'm a, they are a friend to me, and I'm a friend to them. That's natural. That's not fault. If you have one good son, and he's always helping uh, you in whatever, your business or your work or your artistic <coughs> production, then, oh, he's very helping me. But that doesn't mean to say you don't like the others, and they're, they're useless. Huh? So, Bhagavad Gita gives all this information. So when we see this, we think, ah, oh, Krishna, this is philosophy which is thousands of years old, and even through the Vedas we understand it, actually the Vedas are produced, this Vedic philosophy is produced uh, eternally. It is the eternal handbook on the material world. So you may say, oh, you'd... I don't know if Krishna is God or this and that, and the, but okay, tell me somebody better, tell me something better, tell me some, you know, capitalist philosopher, like me, uh, Keynesian philosophy, he was, he was one, um, Milton Keynes, that was in the turn of the century, last century, he said, it was after the so many wars in Europe, he said, we have to make people greedy because then they'll work hard and then we can repair the world. He was saying like that. But if you let greed loose, then you also uh, make the fair ground for conflict. So all these philosophies, communism, communism, Feminism, thisism, globalism, thatism, thatism, they're all 
atheistic because they don't center the soul and society on the Supreme Lord. So this is what Krishna is saying. Through Varnashram, you organize society nicely, but within that pious framework, you practice surrender to the Supreme Lord. And how will you learn surrender? You learn in the heart through uh, Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, right? The Veda, the Acharyas that give the proper understanding of the Veda, and then the bona fide Guru. So, this satisfies the intelligence, and as we just saw that verse, um, Arjuna is surrendering to Krishna. Krishna is illustrating the um, universal form, so on and so forth. So on this surrender topic, also I remember another, I encourage everyone to listen to Prabhupada's lectures and conversations, because he deals with different people who come to discuss. So another person said, well, um, this was one of the early conversations, and because that was way back in the old so-called hippie days or revolution and we want to be free of the idea. So somebody said to Prabhupada, said, well, there's, a, there's one sadhu, he says that you don't need a teacher. You can be your own teacher. So then Prabhupada said, well, then why is he teaching? <laughs> he's saying you don't need a teacher, but he's teaching that you don't need a teacher. Therefore, he's putting himself in a position of teaching. <coughs> huh? It's contradictory. You say you don't need a guru, but uh, you're, you're acting as my guru telling me that. So you're a hypocrite. <laughs> you're a... You're not following your own philosophy. If you think we don't need teacher, then you be, stay quiet. Don't instruct me. <laughs> right? <laughs> You're teaching me, but telling me I don't need a teacher. This is confusing. Sort your own brain out first. So, <laughs> but of course, we always surrender, right? The child surrenders to the mother and father takes the advice of mother and father, they grow up, they go to school, so on and so forth. So we can't say that we don't need advice, but the thing is we should get the best advice. Huh? Which is, uh, and if somebody, like I say that, sec uh, to repeat the point, if somebody says, well, I believe in God, but I don't know if Krishna's God. Well, um, okay, <laughs> tell me somebody better than Krishna. But here we have, on the basis of Bhagavad Gita, such a brilliant book, all the great sages, Asitala, Devala, Vyas, uh, the consistency of this knowledge, the, uh, it is tied and trusted throughout time, uh, so we should surrender. And if we surrender, uh, we all ex you're all experienced devotees, right? Then you feel Krishna in the heart. Huh? Chetu Dapana Marginam, right? Kiride Udai, then Bhakti arises. And this is the factual thing, right? Why is Iskon uh, sustained, created? Because Prabhupada said, read Bhagavad Gita, read the Shastra, Shravanam, and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. And I have personal experience. In London, we had a lunch program. I would give a talk, then people would have prashad, and uh, we would talk afterward. And I had a, a big room like this, and I had a small little shop there, and I would sell neem beads, you know, 50p. That's about, that was like two, three rupees. <coughs> so we'd just have a chat and talk, and people uh, So the people, I think I've told this before, the people that took the beads, and try chanting. I said, look, just try chanting. They would come back the next few days and ask questions. Huh? Because they go home and I'd show them how to chant. You just chant one mantra on one bead. No bead bag or sometimes people took bead bags. But, and they would come back. Because the mantra is acting. Huh? Kali Yuga. Right? So, Lord Nityananda, uh, I think this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he says, Lord Nityananda 
the marketplace of the holy name right uh, he, I think it's a song yes and in that he says Lord Nityananda has opened a stall in the marketplace and he's selling the holy name and so oh really he's selling the holy name you shouldn't sell it <laughs> but he's, so how do you purchase that holy name there's just one thing lolam Lolium. Yeah, loyal. You just have to have the desire. That's all. Right? That's the next verse, as we said. Huh? Arjuna, I've told you everything now. You decide what you do. But if you want help uh, in that decision, then try chanting. Because the mantra in Kali Yuga is especially empowered. And that will... That is how you will begin your reciprocation with Krishna through chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare now it doesn't matter if you're married Grihasta on the street in this rickshaw waller or big business executive it doesn't matter Stani Shruti Katan just chant uh, that's all don't have to change anything. Don't have to learn to put a nice turban on. <laughs> you just try chanting and then Kuride Udai. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhukabhanai Shravanadi Sudhachitte Kuride Udai. It'll come automatically. Huh? And then you'll get, as Krishna says here, you'll get Shantim. Your your anxi material anxieties will be clayed. And then, uh, as Krishna says here, my devotees, they enter into my abode, my leela, by my grace. That is bhakti. So, any questions, comments? Can I ask one foolish question? Okay. <laughs> I'm used to them. <laughs> no, no, you're very good question. Okay, go ahead. This is 1862. 1862. 1862, it is there in the purport, Rigveda, Om Tat Vishnu Param Padam Sada Pashyanti Surya. I was thinking. Even this sloha, when we enter into the altar, it is there, we have to chant before doing... Archinam. Actually, Vishnu is 400 form. We are worshipping Krishna, 200 form. Oh, why the Vedas say, why don't say, Om Tat Krishna Paramam Padam? Well, it will also talk about Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Lord Brahma has said, Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha. So Krishna, uh, Parama Purusha, Param, that, that's just the verse we just read from chapter 10. So Prabhupada explains that. Parama Purusha means supreme person. So Prabhupada explains this point, and it's there in the Vedas, and it's there in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, that Ishwara Parama Krishna, that like Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam, Ete Kamsha. That there are so many expansions from Krishna. Balaram is expansion, Radharani is expansion, Shakti Tattva, Purusha Shakti. Then there is Mahavishnu, there is the Pan, right? Vasudev Shankashan Prajumna, Chaturvyuha, then there's Chaturvyuha functioning in the material world. And then all the incarnations are coming, the Das Mula, sorry, Das Avatar. Uh, the Leela avatars. And Bhagavatam explains that they, uh, that the incarnations of Krishna are like waves in the ocean. Right? Krishna is expanded in the heart of everyone. Rishikesh. Right? Um, Shiradakshai Vishnu. But Parama Purusha means that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. That all those forms the ultimate form, the candle from which all candles are lit, is Krishna. 
So in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami has um, explained methodically all the different qualities of Krishna. But then he explains that there's four particular qualities. This is to prove the point in terms of qualities and logic that Krishna is the Supreme. Uh, and the four qualities he gives is that um, that is not manifest in the Vishnu form. That Krishna's Leela, Krishna's relationship with his devotees in Madhurya Ras, Vatsalya Bhav, Sakya Bhav, that they have a special sweetness. <coughs> Vishnu is worshipped in um, awe and reverence. You know, he's worshipped uh, as the Aishwarya Bhav. But Krishna's leel, Krishna is worshipped with this great intimacy. Radharani and Ma Mother Yashoda. So th there's a special quality. And then Krishna's next quality that Krishna is superior to Vishnu is that his beauty is unlimited. Huh? Krishna is like all beauty compressed into one form. And Radharani, of course. So the, the, his beauty excels Vishnu, you understand? Though he's four-armed form, that is because he's functional in the material world. He has two hands for the bhaktas, right? The uh, conch and the... Lotus. Huh? Lotus. Lotus, yes. And then he has the chakra and the gada for the chastising the... The Asura. So Krishna's form is just playing the flute. And then Krishna, so his beauty is uh, super excellent. That's one read. Then, the, let me think. Do, what's that? Flute. Yes, his, that, the flute playing is the third one. His flute playing is especially attractive. So it's, um, what is the? Yes, the, he explain it. Prema Madhurya, the sweetness. Yeah, the sweetness, his relation. Yes, his his Leela is. Leela Madhurya. Yeah, Madhurya. Then the the, the swoot playing his Rupa and. Huh? Oh, his flute playing. Yes, so these enchant the whole world. Interesting to note at this point that Krishna's flute, the sound of Krishna's flute that attracts everyone to the Ras Leela that is represented in, manifest in the material world as Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare So this is why uh, Rupa Goswami is uh, explaining this that the form of Krishna is the supreme form but of course we respect other acharyas and other opinions because they may have attachment to Aishwarya Bhav. So if somebody is attached to the Aishwarya Bhav and Vishnu, well we don't fight. We don't, you know, we don't, oh, this, 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 uh, because uh, everyone has a particular swarup. So some people's relationship may be with the Vishnu form, some people. So we don't you know, we don't cause friction in that way. But uh, according to Brahma Madhva Sampradaya and explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sad Goswamis, we understand that Krishna is the supreme Parama Purusha. Because he is speaking Bhagavad Gita. So the Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Samaveda, Tavari. So this is the essence of the Vedas. This is the essence of the Upanishads. Radhanath Swami Maharaj said, like uh, Krishna and Radharani are like at home. And Lord Vishnu, all are Narayan, they are in office. Yes. <laughs> looking after yes. and maintaining the, all the universes. Particular, yes. yes. So, uh, at times when it's written, Prabhupada has written, it's uh, like if in office and the Vedas, uh, like Rig Veda and all, 
So that has nothing to do with our Gopal. It has to do with Lord. Yes. The, the, that's, uh, yeah, because that's Aishwarya Bhav. Yes. So Aishwarya Bhav means Aishwarya means the, uh, the opulence of the Supreme. So he's four-handed. He's magnificent. Lakshmi is not embracing Vishnu, massaging the feet, right? So she, even she is showing example. But as Radharani, she's chastising Krishna. Lalita Shaki is saying, you are spending too much time with Chandravali. <laughs> so this is the Leela, this is the sweetness of the Leela. So this, this is why Lord Chaitanya is Namo Mahabhadanyaya, because he's particularly giving this most intimate aspect of Godhead, Golok Leela, Gokul Leela. This is revealed, and he's giving entrance into that. So, um, we are very, very fortunate to be situated in this way. So this is the conclusions of the great sages, the Shastra, the Sadhus. But we respect all. If somebody is worshipping Vishnu or Shiva or Lord Brahma, oh, we don't say, you know, you're in Maya, you know. So, in South, and many, actually in the, I have heard in the Ramanujas, many of them, they are worshipping Krishna also. So, I remember once I was uh, in Madurai, and I was going round the temple, and you know, it's a very magnificent temple, Menakshi, Menakshi. Yeah, Menakshi. So then somebody came up to me in the street and, and said, there's a... I, he was speaking in uh, Tamil. I didn't quite understand very much. He said, come, come. And he took me down this side road, a few hundred yards, and there was, there was a fantastic deity. You know, South Indian style? It was open area, there was a manda open area and Amanda, and there was Vamsi Gopal in that beautiful, very, must seven, eight foot deity. Uh, huh? Yeah, have you seen? In, yeah, just, it's just standing, in Manakshi, near Manakshi temple. Yeah, so, uh, there was, he was just there, maybe he was, Especially sent by Krishna to take me there. I don't know, <laughs> but I saw Venu Gopal. You, you, you see what is the name of that deity? Yeah. No, no. It is Venu Gopal. Yeah. So it, it, yeah, in this beautiful style, and he was just standing there with the flute in the in the evening light. And you could see, ah, here is Bhagavan. His only business is to play the flute for the pleasure of his devotees. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, any questions, comments? Can you, can you explain the reason here? Everything material is spiritual. Yes, because it has a um, well, it is a, a secondary form of spirit. You see, the material energy is generated out of the pradhan. The pradhan is the causal ocean. You know, Mahavishnu, he is lying on the Anantasesh, and Ramadevi is there, and he's, em he's in Yoga Nidra, so he's emanating pradhan. And when it comes time for the manifestation of the material universes, he glances at Durga Devi and then it creates all the material universes. They're manifest during one breath. It's explained in Brahma Samhita. So this Pradhan, it is the emanation. It is spiritual. Uh, but in Krishna Loka, Krishna is emanating and all the Vishnu and also the devotees, they're emanating Chit Shakti. 
So that is a higher state of spirituality. The pradhan, you can consider it in this way, that when we're asleep, we're also conscious, right? But our consciousness is in a secondary form. When we're awake, particularly if we're awake spiritually, our consciousness is in a higher state. But it's still consciousness. So the pradhan <coughs> emanated by Mahavishnu, uh, that is acted upon by the Kala Shakti, the glance of Mahavishnu, which is Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, that is the lingam and the yoni, right? It is that interaction upon the pradhan that creates the variety of the material energy that we see. So that, uh, just like, for example, when we're asleep, uh, we forget ourselves. Oh, I, I'm in the jungle and a tiger is chasing me, or I'm the king of the world, or I'm flying in the sky, right? Mm -hmm. We kind of lose our identity. So the Pradhan, because it's emanated by Mahavishnu in Yoga Nidra, it has, and this is explained in Brahma Samhita, get a copy and study closely, uh, the, Ma, the Pradhan has the quality of Tama. It is the Chit Shakti with Tama, tama forgetfulness of the Self. So the Pradhan uh, acted upon by the time factor, Lord Shiva, creating the material variety of energy, that inherently has the quality of forgetfulness of the Supreme Self. That's why the materialist, he forgets his connection with God. He you know, becomes atheistic or agnostic or voidistic. Because if we act in an enjoying mood with the material energy, the tama aspect that is inherent in the pradhan tends to make us think we're the enjoyer, we just we forget. So, but it's still spiritual. In the, to put simply, because it is an emanation of Supreme Spirit, Supreme Person, you understand? But it is a secondary, uh, emanation for manifesting the material universes. Does that answer? It takes a little contemplation, but the simple point is that because it has its origin in Supreme Lord, it is spiritual. But the sages and the sadhus have always, this is material and this is spiritual, this helps us in our understanding. But as Prabhupada in the purport says, but our, we should understand that ultimately everything is spiritual. You understand? Mm. But it is a secondary form of existence. But everything is spiritual ultimately. Because mm. Vasudeva Savamiti, right? In the Gita, Krishna says, Vasudeva Savamiti, Samahatma Sadulamaha. So, the realized devotees become more and more aware of the Krishna aspect, the spiritual aspect, even of the material energy. You understand? Because their consciousness becomes uh, immersed in Krishna. You understand? But during period of sadhana, we have to make this distinction. This is material activity, this is selfishness, this is kunta, this is vaikunta. But ultimately they have the same source. Hmm? Just like you can think of it, the spiritual world is Krishna's flute playing. But sometimes the, somebody, some music is out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all music, but the material world is a little out of tune with the Supreme. But not really out of tune, but it's a different manifestation of the music of creation. Okay then, thank you all very much for your kind attendance and attention. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada, Sadhu Sangha, Vrindavan Dham, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Ki Jai.